What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Italian Stallion, ready for another episode of Rebels with a Cause. You know what time it is, baby. It's Tuesday, 9.30, and it's time for the cause, because the cause don't stop when the clock hits zero, baby. Got a great show tonight. We're going to get it started right away. Just real quick, as always, just want to just touch on a couple of things. Want to give uh, just the views and opinions of this program are not affiliated with those of any other, other organization or of West High School. This is solely the Rebels with a Cause Cruise views. Uh, also want to give a shout out real quick to my boy Alex Thatcher and the Knoxville Coffee Company. Go pay him a visit. Have that nice brew there in Marble City off of Sutherland Avenue. Any time of the day, it's good for you. And also want to give a shout out to the girls at the King's Chamber, Miss Kim Castle and Rachel Davis. Uh, if you are a teacher or any type of first responder, um, if you'd let them know that, they will give you a discount when you go visit them. They'll take care of your haircuts, beard trims, waxes, the, the works. They definitely give you the royal treatment there at the chamber. So without further ado, though, I want we have a special guest tonight. He's very busy right in the middle of going for a third straight uh, state championship. We're going to bring him on here shortly. But first and foremost, I want to bring on my co-host and my brother, Mr. 2003 West, the voice of the Runnin' Rebels and Lady Rebels for going on his 19th season when they take the court later this November and December, uh, coming to a, a court near you, the new version of uh, coached by the uh, the new coaches, Coach Graves and Coach Eggleston. Shout out to them. Um, but I uh, want to give him his proper introduction. Mr. Two-Pair Tate, Brian Tate, what is up, brother? How you doing? What's going on, man? How we doing? Look, like, man, you know, this show is – it's come a long way, man. Like in, in such a different amount of time, we are really making so much progress into where we are right now, man. Like, and it's Absolutely. it's a great thing to see. Great thing to see. But give me one second, actually. I'm getting a quick phone call, business call. This is actually you're fine. shout out no, to Tennessee State and Coach Joe. Hey, it's, it's getting no good over here. I'll be right back. No worries. You bet. You bet. So, um, well, while, while uh, Brian's uh, coming on and uh, the coach uh, 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 and our stats guy, Mr. Shane McGee, he will be joining us here very shortly. Um, I know he's got a couple of questions that he would like to get to with our distinguished guest. And as uh, 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 Brian had alluded to, he said it best. Uh, we've come a long way. This is our, our 40th episode. And uh, we can't have done it without the love and support of each and every one of you, whether you're a former player, current player, current administrator, former staff member, just family members. We, we love we love everything you guys do. Hit that like and subscribe button. Share the message of the cause. And that way we can keep it going from uh, from here on going forward. But without further ado, I don't want to waste any more of his time. He is a busy man. He is. <clears throat> oh, real quick. He's coming on right now. Let me get him on real quick. Mr. Shane O'Mac, welcome to the show, buddy. Welcome to the show. So, Sorry, yeah. my computer took forever to load up. No, no, you're good, bud. You're good. Well, we've got him backstage. Um, you'll have your questions ready. I'll have them ready to go. And uh, uh, I know he's busy, so we got to get to it. But without further ado, let's bring him on. I want to give him a proper introduction. He is now in his eighth season at Knoxville West as the head football coach. He is a two-time state champion coach. I believe he won coach of the year. Uh, last year and was presented with as much uh, with the 2022 team uh, that went 15 and 0 and he was presented with a plaque there in Nashville at a Tennessee Titans game. He's coached for many years, built an outstanding program at Morristown West prior to coming to Knoxville West. He's going to tell us all about our journey. Let's bring him on. The one, the only, co head coach Lamar of Knoxville West High School. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you, guys. I, I, I want to thank you guys for what you do for sports programs at West and, and our school. Uh, I, I think this is an unbelievable thing you guys are doing, and uh, I, I want to tell you I really appreciate that. It means a lot. Oh, man, we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you. Definitely. You bet. You bet. 
Well, let's get to it. Um, Coach, I'm going to ask the first question. And uh, what I'd like to do is for those that don't know who you are, um, because we actually, if you can believe this, have fans out in Louisiana of all places and Florida. And they always are like, so who's this Knoxville West from Class 5A you, that you rep, James, all the time? And so some of them are going to miss the show live because they're hunkering down for a hurricane. But I would like for you to go on ahead and kind of talk about your journey of, you know, what made you get into coaching? coaching after you were done playing and you know what have you accomplished the goals that you set out when you originally went on this journey but but stallion stallion yes you know yes, sir. you know the number one question we gotta ask before we ask oh before yes we ask. It, you know this might be ask it if he gets mad he gets mad at you not at me so <laughs> in in your foot in your football time of before we get on your journey On on that football field, was there one person you say that did bust your ass? Like just that one per who was the first person? We asked everybody this. Like as a football player, who was that person you say, you know what? Okay, that was my welcome to football moment. Oh goodness. That that there was a lot of those. Uh I, 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 I remember uh I played at Jefferson County and uh Okay. okay. Uh I was on the kickoff team, and uh, and they did some cross blocking up front on the, uh, on the kickoff return. And you know, I remember Coach Kisbeth and Coach Smith telling us we had to outrun it. Well, I, I was trying to figure out why I was on it if we was going to outrun anything, and uh, I wasn't able to outrun it. And the guy hit me from the side. I don't know who it was. Don't remember who it was. The only thing I know is I had to get my face mask changed after the play because it was bent. And, and you, you know, at, at that time, you didn't have a concussion. You, you know, you had just hurt a little bit. So, uh, continue. Hey, your, bell bell wrong. Wrong. Just yeah, bell. your bell got wrong. That's what yeah, I heard. bell got wrong. That was right. <laughs> and, and that was exactly <laughs> right. It did get wrong. But, but that happened to me quite a bit, it seems like. <laughs> for sure, that's for awesome. sure. That's awesome. So you played at Jefferson County. What made you kind of go into the coaching route, uh, Coach Brown? Well, well that, that's where it all kind of got started at. Uh, and I, you know, I, I was raised by my grandparents, and uh, uh, I, I was at a time in my life getting high school. I had some choices to make, and uh, you know, coming to some forks in the road, and I had to make decisions and. Uh, Coach Kisbeth, my head coach, was uh, an unbelievable man, still is. Uh, me and him talked quite a bit throughout the football season. I uh, got to see him when we went to Jefferson County and scrimmage. The, the, they just named uh, the field after him uh, when they opened this year uh, against Oak Ridge at home. But an uh, unbelievable man. And uh, and, and I, my defensive back coach was named Jim Smith and, and another dude that I, I just love to death to this day and – both of those guys had a major impact on my life. Uh, and uh, they, they made such an impact that I, I, I thought this is what I want to do. And uh, just being around them and the way they treat kids, the way they treated me, the way they, the, the way they helped me make some tough decisions. Uh, I wanted to give some of that back and got into coaching and, and started out at Marstown West, uh, was there a couple years, and then uh, I, I GA'd at uh, Carson Newman and went to Marstown West, and uh, Chuck King from Carson Newman got a job at uh, the University of Cumberland's uh, in Williamsburg, Kentucky, and asked me to go with them, and I left Marstown West, and I, I knew I didn't want to coach, foot, uh, coach college football, but uh, I went up there. Uh, me and my wife decided to go up there. And uh, I spent a year up there, uh, had, had a daughter that was, that was about two or three years old, didn't get to see her a whole lot. And the next year I came, a spot opened back up at Marstown West and stayed there uh, until I got my daughter through one school system. I, I never wanted to be that coach that moved around. I wanted my kids to be in one school system and not have to change. But plus I wanted to make an impact on the community. Uh, because that, that was what Coach Kisbeth and Coach Smith did for me at Jefferson County. And I, I got her, her senior year after football season. Uh, me and my wife decided to look around, and there was two jobs in the state of Tennessee that I applied for. Uh, 
course, West High School being one and Siegel High School in Murfreesboro being another one. And uh, 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 turns out Dr. Spees called me, the first one to call me and took the job. Uh, and, you, you know, I, I, I did a lot of research, knew what I was getting into, knew the, sh the shape the football program was in at that time. Uh, but uh, got to meet a lot of new people. Uh, and, and a lot of people that, you know, eight years later are my best friends. Uh, and and uh, one great thing about that people don't really talk about, our, our coaching staff has pretty much stayed intact uh, all, all eight years, and, and that that's that, that's a great benefit. I mean, the kids are hearing the same things every year, and and but those guys have – my assistant coaches have been really important to me. Uh, as far as accomp accomplishing my goals, I, I guess the only goal I had was to uh, was to make a difference in the world uh, and, and, and just start with one kid at a time. Uh, and I, I've got a coaching staff that's very diverse. None of us are the same. And, uh, you know, I, I want a kid to be able to find – I don't want 11 Lamar Browns coaching this football team. Uh, I want people different than me and – because I, I think that gives every kid an opportunity to find somebody he can relate to and bond with. Uh, because, you know, there, there's times we got, to, we got to have hard talks with kids uh, that, that I, I, I've never experienced. And, and so for me to go in there and talk about it and act like I know about it, it it's crazy. You know, just example of that this year, you, you know, Chad Brooks uh, talked to the football team about, uh uh, about being a young African American and being poured over by the law. I mean, I've never experienced that, and and, and so you know, he he gave the football team some great advice on how to handle those situations, and uh, uh, so I, I want a lot of people different than me. But you know, I, I think I'm always striving to reach my goal of making a difference. Each year is different. Uh, you get new kids. We got fifty about fifty new freshmen in our program this year. Uh, and, and, you know, when we built this program, state championships wasn't even talked about. I mean, I, I think that's a byproduct of us doing the other things that we do talk about really well and, and, and the players buying in and doing that. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's a journey and uh, it, it's a marathon. It's not a race. And, you know, I, I don't know how much longer I have left in this profession. I know I've coached more years than I'm going to coach. Uh, I'm on the downhill slide, but uh, when I stop having fun with it, it'll be time to get out of it, and, and that journey will end. And hopefully, I can look back and uh, and say that you, you know we did make a difference. Absolutely, I, I've been really coaching. You're, you're at a higher level than I'm at, but I've been coaching for the last decade. And every reason you gave for why you're you got into coaching is the exact same reason I got into coaching. Yeah. Uh, two of uh, my former coaches, you coached their sons. Uh, play for Scott Cummings and uh, Rich Dubon. So, yeah, yeah, I did. You know that 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 you know last year was really special for for West High School. You know, you get, you know, I, I never dreamed when I came to West High School I'd be coaching Scott Cummings kid. Yeah, and and for him to transfer into us last year and and play the way he did in, in the big moments, especially at the end of the year. Uh, you know, what a great time for West High School. You know, he had Scott there at one state championship in, in, in 2014, and now his son gets to win one in uh, 2023. It, it was a great experience. It was weird for me coaching against the against their kids because I was at the beard for a long time. So we played when Scott was at Halls and uh, Parker was in the middle school league at West. It's it just weird for me. It's like I, I know these guys – because they made me want to get into coaching. So it was, just, it was weird, but it's also a great moment because I started to see them out there on the field and be there and have those conversations with them. So it was always, it was always fun for me. Amen. I, I think what's crazy for me is to watch that these, you know, Parker's a senior this year. And, you know, I remember Bo, Coach DeBond before he even had kids. I mean, that's yeah. how many years and the years just go by so fast. And, you know, it's it, you wait so long for the season to come and it's over in a blink of an eye. And you got to take every every game, every play, every practice special because there, it's gone. You know, that's yeah, why yeah. the show, the the cause, it don't stop when the clock hits zero. But Amen. you got to find a new cause after football, you know, that type of <laughs> We talked about that yesterday as a coaching staff on Monday when we're handing out the scouting reports. You know, it says, 
week four team four and uh it's hard to believe it's week four <laughs> i mean it, it yeah. is hard to believe it. i mean the season yeah. we're about halfway through it which is <laughs> right <coughs> unbelievable you know uh two pair i know you had a question and what a great segue coach brown without even realizing it but i know that two pair had a question and i'm going to have you go on ahead and ask it two pair go for it so yeah, yeah. so you know with the the success that the program has had is there ever any pressure being the honey team every year with every game that you guys play is the next team's biggest game on their schedule how does it does it do you do, is there any pressure in that well i i don't think anybody can put any more pressure on, on us than we do and, 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 you know, to to address the expectations, I, I really wouldn't want to be at a place that didn't have high expectations. Uh, and, and our community and their administration and our school gives us everything we need to be successful. Uh, and just, uh, you, you know, the pressure, it, it, I, I guess it seems like every game we play is a big game. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It, it, every it game we play is a big game. So it, it just becomes a little bit of habit that you've got to prepare for big games. And, uh, you know, you open with Bearden, uh, you know, big rival. And, and then, you know, last last week we played Farragut, another big rival. Uh, got Maryville. And then we jump into the uh, region uh, for a couple weeks. And then that there sets Alcoa and Anderson County. Then we close their region. Uh, every week's a big week, and mm-hmm. and the pressure we put on ourselves, you know, to be good and the things. And I, I wouldn't say it's pressure. I, I'd say we work really hard. Our, mm-hmm. our kids work really hard to try to meet those expectations, and and they hurt that they hurt when they don't. Our kids were hurting after the Bearden game, and uh, but you know they got back up. Sun came up, came in Monday, and started getting better. Uh, I think we've gotten better every week. Uh, I think the Farragut game was the best game, best game we played. Uh, uh, you know, against Bearden, we, we couldn't throw the ball. Our special teams was awful. And then, you know, Coach Ellerby's done such a great job with those guys the past couple of weeks. I mean, you look at Clinton, we have a punt return for a touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown. Touchdown. And, mm-hmm. and, and don't give up much in the return game. Then, mm-hmm. then last Two week. Two block punts. Two block punts. Two block punts. Punt. And, then, yeah. and then last week, you know, Antoine starts the game off. Farragut gets the ball and he returns the punt to the two yard line, and uh, it, it, it's hard for an offense to screw that up. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shane, you absolutely. had a question too, um, and and it's ironic, you know, Coach Brown did mention that here they're handing out the scouting reports week four, but uh, you had this question uh, for him. Uh, after the last three games, where do you want to see improvement uh, on both offensive and defensive side of the ball? Well, I, I think you're starting to see it. Uh, I mean, th- there's still a lot of things we, we've got to get better at w- within this, but uh, we really struggled throwing the ball against Bearden. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and that, you know, Parker DeBond got way too much blame for that. I mean, that there, there's that there's times that, you know, he didn't have time to throw, which starts with pre- pass protection. There's times he threw beautiful balls and, and, and the receiver – you know, just wasn't there. We just wasn't mm-hmm. where it was supposed to be. And uh, uh, but I, I felt like you know, last week I think Parker was sixteen of twenty four for about two hundred yards. Uh, yep. uh, and and so just look methodical. Now methodical what? Methodical with it. He looks yep. so methodical with it. Like everything was precision. The timing, the protections. Like when I went back and watched the tape, is you're seeing a team get better in real time. Yeah, yeah. So you know, then there's a lot of things we need to improve. Was we perfect in the passing game? No. Uh, we, we've got to continue to get better at that stuff, and I want to see improvement with that. Uh, special teams has gotten a lot better uh, throughout these first three weeks. We've got to continue. We've got to win special teams every week. That that that's the standard that we set, and 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 that really hurt us against Beard. Uh, and and defensively, you know, right now we're just we're playing really relentless. We're playing hard, 
but we've got to get to the point that when, when Coach Chandler calls the defense, we have all 11 guys on the same page. Yep. Uh, because when we're not on the same page is when we get hurt. And and I, I know that they're working hard at this, that week, that this week with getting on the same page because – if you're not on the same page against Maryville defensively, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so those guys are working really hard to do that. And, and we've got some great competitors on defense. And, and you know, just some of those guys got to figure out that they're not supposed to make every play. And, mm -hmm. and when, they, when they do something they're not supposed to do to try to make a play is when the other team makes a play. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, offensively, I, I think that, we're still a work in progress, and I want to continue to see that growth. And we're facing a big challenge this week. But uh, Maryville's not gave up a point all year. So uh, that that takes a little pressure off of us. We just need to get three. Uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a great night. Uh, but uh, you got the kicker yeah. to do it, though. So yeah, yeah, we, we, do. <laughs> we do have the kick, we have the foot to do it. So maybe, maybe we can get at least get in field goal range, but uh, you know we expect to see that growth week to week. Uh, you know you hear our kids talking about stacking days. They want to that they want to be better. They want to be better tomorrow than they were today. You know today's the baseline for tomorrow, and and they've really bought into that. And and hopefully you will continue to see that growth. It's funny, Coach. Um, uh, Shane's next question, I really want to segue into that to talk about the opponent you are facing this week. So, Shane, go for it, brother. Go ahead. All right, so we saw Maribel take some losses last year, and they proved they can be beat. This season, they have not allowed a single point in three victories, so, as you just said. What is the key to stopping them this Friday and coming out with a win? Oh, man. I don't know if we have enough time. Uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're a very, very good football team. Um, they, they, they've always been a sound football team, even when we were all playing. So yeah, they, they, and you know that's what that's what we talked to the offensive team and defensive team yesterday about. You know, we got to win this game. That you know, uh, Maribel is not going to lose it. I mean, we got to go take it. They're not going to yeah. do anything stupid. They're 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 going to be where they're supposed to be. They're going to be disciplined. Uh, and, and they, they, their offensive line is just absolutely huge. You got a great back and great quarterback back there behind them. Uh, you know, defensively, our, our little guys are going to have to fight. I mean, they're, they're going to have to play hard. And and, and you, you may see one of them get driven 10 yards down the field and get pancaked. But he's got to get back up and get in there and, and continue to fight because we got to do that for 48 minutes against yeah. These guys in all phases, uh, we, we can't make we can't make stupid mistakes. You know, one, one thing that's got to get better. You know, if we can't turn the ball over like we've been turning the ball over against Maryville. Uh, if we do that, it's going to be a long night. Uh, but you know, I, I'm excited to play this game. It, it, it's a huge game. Uh, our kids are excited to play it. You know, we created some pretty good rivalries around here in the last eight years, and uh, uh, that, that this is one of them, and and we know we know we're gonna get Maryville's best effort. Uh, but you, you know, I I don't think our kids are scared of them. I think our kids will show up and play. We may get our butts kicked, but that, that we're gonna show up and play and, and, and see what happens. Well, one of my favorite memories from when I play when I played that game was uh, Scott came in right before the game. We're all sitting there in the old uh, field house. He has the tape in his hand. And I we lost 40 something to nothing the year before. And yeah. he slammed that tape down on the ground, said nothing else except 42 nothing. He slammed that down. I mean, we still got beat that day. And I dislocated my shoulder, but we were hyped to go out there. And yeah. we did everything we had. It's, it's an honor to play those guys. You know, I, I, I I give our schedule a lot of credit for where we are right now. I mean, I mean the first time we played Maribel, I guess four years ago, uh, we went over and got a. We had a good football team. Uh, went over and got a butts kicked thirty-five to seven, and, and that game probably taught us more than any other game I've coached. In that that uh, you know, every phase of our football program had to get better to compete with those guys, and and, and we figured it out, and uh, kids figured it out, coaches figured it out, and, and we started getting better, and. And I, I don't think it's a coincidence that, 
you know, since that game, I, I guess we we haven't lost many since then. Uh, nope. And uh, it, it's been – they get a lot of the credit, you know, for them, playoff Colts, won nine straight state championships. Uh, those guys get a lot of credit for making us a better program because <clears throat> we see what a state championship contender looks like every year. Amazing. Well, East Tennessee Gauntlet has gotten really rough, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of state champions and teams like compete for state championships in the region now. Yes. In that area, so, you know, you're getting everybody's best game, but it makes you better each week. You know, you look at our region. I think five of the last six state champions have come out of our region. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's crazy when you throw that in there in our out of region schedule. It, it's tough. Coach, I'm going to give the next question to uh, Two Pair, um, and uh, Two Pair, go for it, brother. Yeah, you know, seeing the the success of a program, like what defines a winner in your opinion? Well, I, I think a winner is, is somebody that's always going to learn. Uh, you're not always going to win, uh, but you can always learn. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's something that I, I think we've done really well within our program is, is, is our kids want to get better. I mean, we didn't we, we didn't treat on Monday we didn't treat the beard and loss no different than we did the thirty eight to three victory over Fairy. One purpose, and one purpose, and that was to get better uh, and, and learn from it. And, and our kids believe in that, and they do it. So you know. I, I think a winner is somebody that always learns. And I think I, I think a winner is also somebody that tries to do it the right way. Uh, uh, that, that's one. That's another thing we try to do in our football program is do it the right, right way. Our, our kids are there. that They're student athletes, and student comes first. They wouldn't be playing if they, if they wasn't in school. Well, I, I think it's important for them to – if you want to be on the great, if you want to be great on the football field, you, you need to start being great in the school. And uh, so we try to do things the right way. Uh, and we challenge our kids with that. And, you know, our, our kids know right from wrong. But, you know, I think I said earlier, they're just like me. I know right from wrong. I just don't always choose to do what's right. And uh, uh, we, we all make mistakes. And uh, you got to learn from those mistakes. They can't define you. You know, uh, Coach, you um, you mentioned earlier that you've now been eight years with the program. Some of the people that you met then are some of your best friends. And you talk about this staff staying intact. You don't see that very often. You know, you see guys that, you know, when opportunity knocks, they take it. You know, you can't blame them for that. But this question Talk about your staff, you know, from Scott Shavers down to any new additions that you've brought on, um, as well as just talk about the support from not only Dr. Spees and the school, but also the community there of Marble City and uh, the One West uh, slogan that is more than just a slogan. It's reality. Can you it, it, talk it, it, about it. that? Uh, yes. You know, I, I've said it. My coaching staff is unbelievable. Uh, we are we're around each other more than uh, we're around our own families this time of year, and and those guys are my best friends. And, and I know that they all know the expectations of our program and, and what what we believe in, and, and they all believe in it. Uh, that they all they all do any above and beyond what they should do. Uh, it, it's just, you know, you, you start on the defensive side of the ball. You know, Baron Chandler's been with me ever since I was in Marshtown as the defensive coordinator. And, and he, he does an unbelievable job. Uh, and, and this is the, the great thing. You know, some of them was there when I came. Some of them I brought new coaches in. And, it, and it's a mixture of guys that just believe in each other. You got Rodney Ellerby that, 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 that's that been there, I think, since 2013. Yep. Uh, coaches mm -hmm. tied in. Uh, uh, Richard Harb is our, is one of our newest additions. Uh, he, he coaches their wide receivers and, and and does an unbelievable job with those guys, uh, just getting them better and getting them to buy in and give effort every day. It's it, it's fun to watch Coach Harb coach uh, DJ Roberts who 
played at AE. Uh, went to hell of a player at AE. Yeah, heck of a player. And uh, you know, he, he came in. You know, DJ just thinks we win state championships. <laughs> this is his third year, and he's <laughs> got two games now. Uh, but you know that that's DJ's expectations, and uh, and he's on those DBs all the time. Uh, but you, you know. They love they love him, and, and and he can coach them hard because they know he loves them. Uh, Quinn Epperly is a, a newest addition this year, helping with quarterbacks. You know, he, he played at CAK, went on to be uh, the Ivy League Player of the Year at quarterback uh, at Princeton, and uh, uh, he, he's really brought a different dynamic to our coaching office that. Uh, you know, especially being there with the quarterbacks and, and take, taking a little bit off of me. Uh, uh, Tyson Seabee's come back this year to help coach the kickers. Oh, wow. uh, a, a former player that, that's got those guys better. And, and you know, Tyson, uh, Tyson's been a part of the program. He knows all about it. Uh, Scott Shaver, everybody asked me what Coach Shaver does. He does everything I don't want to do. He handles the money and, and all that other stuff. And and, and I, I get to coach football. And his son coaches Morgan Shaver, uh, played at West High School, coaches defensive yep. line, was there when I got there. And uh, he, he does an unbelievable job. Uh, it seems like every year, you know, this year, two, two new defensive linemen come in out of the three, and we don't miss a beat. Don't miss a beat at all. Uh, Chad Brooks played with me in Marshtown. Uh, played for me there when I when, when I was inter- interviewing for the job. Chad was one of the uh, first people that I called. He, he lived in Knoxville. He just graduated from Maryville College, and uh, I want to know if I took the job if he'd come with me. And Chad, you know. You know, it's crazy you can say this about all the coaches. You, you know, it don't matter. You, you know, you, Chad, we get asked this quick. What are you going to do? What are you going to do since Braden Latham's left? <laughs> well, Marshawn Bowers steps in. You know, what are you going to do when Marshawn's gone? Uh, and now we got uh, Antares McAllister and uh, Masai Wynn. We haven't Masai skipped Wynn. a beat there. And and he's, he, he's the reason why. Dustin Lyles was there when I got there. Coaches the offensive line and does an unbelievable job with those guys. Uh, and Jamie Holbrook came from. I was looking. One of the things I hadn't had, I guess it was 2020. I hadn't really had that true strength coach at West High School, and uh, that, mm-hmm. that important to our program. And and you know, people say they they do a nationwide search. We did a nationwide search. We put it out there on. I got a hold of people that knew those big strength coaching groups, and we, we, we put it out there. We was looking for one, and and Coach Holbrook was coaching football. He's from Vermont and was coaching football in Louisiana and uh, uh, applied for the job and uh, interviewed him and two or three others, and he just seemed to be a fit. Uh, you know, all those strength guys, is look, that they're a little crazy. Uh, that's Coach, Coach Holbrook. He, he, he's a little crazy. Uh, and, and that's good. Uh, he, he's really – you've seen a big jump in our strength program and, and the amount of weights that we are moving once he got there. And, you know, all those guys. And I, I would be – I'd be crazy if I didn't, you know, include Ashley Spees in this because she is – she's the reason why I'm at Marsh – I mean, at, at West High School in Knoxville. She's the reason why I left Marstown West. Uh she sold me on the vision, the one with vision that she had for this school, and and it's not it's not just words with her. It, it, it's a culture that she's built that is unbelievable, and our community and our parents that there's not a need that we have that they don't they don't meet. Uh, I mean, it, it could be we need a new sled, we get a new sled. It, it, it could be it, it could be a kid needs a place to stay for a month. They've got a place to stay for a month. Uh, it, it, it could be we need new state. We, we need state championship rings. Our community uh, uh, comes through, and uh, uh, West is a West is a very special place and a very special community. Yeah, 
Yeah. And if you're not a part of it, you, you wouldn't understand, you, you know, and, and we're blessed. We're blessed that you got guys like us that have come, you know, we've yeah. been a part of this since 1998, 1999, respectively, you know, coming in and graduates and the fact that we can give back to the school that gave us a shot, you know, it, it's just something yeah, special to be a part of. It is. Yeah, for sure. Um, Brian, I'm going to give you the next question, by the way. Um, uh, go for it, brother. Yeah, so you've you seen what it is to be at the mountaintop. You know what all you got to go through. You know what type of team has to be disciplined to go through those battles when it gets into late November. What it, will it take for this team to be the last team standing when it's all said and done for the third time in a row? Well, I, I think I think we got the talent. Uh, I, I really do. I think we're a talented football team. But, you know, it's not very often that the most talented team wins a championship. Uh, and and I, I don't think we're the most talented team in 5A. Uh, but I think we got talent. Our, our kids have to continue to get better every week. No matter what happens, we have to continue to get better. And uh, this group to this point tells me they want to do that. And uh, we have to keep coming together uh, because, you, you know, you, you, you get more out of life if you're doing it for somebody else than just doing it for yourself. And uh, we, we talk a lot about a thing called Talent Plus. You know, we're, we're not going to change our talent, but we have to make that plus sign as big as we can make it. And, and what does that mean? That, that, that means – it's the way we trust each other. It's the way we care about each other. It's the love that, that you feel when you walk into our locker room. Uh, because, you know, if you're playing for somebody else, you're playing for the guy next to you, it's going to benefit you more than if you're just playing for yourself. So I, I think, you know, I don't know what this year is going to hold, but I, I really like his football team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Shane, you had, um, I'm going to give you the final question because it's a really fun question. And I coach, I want to thank you again for coming on. I know how busy you are preparing for the, um, challenge that's ahead. And, and, and like you said, week in, week out, every challenge and, and so forth that, that you're going to face and get everybody's best shot. And I know want to give your best shot at these teams to uh, make yourselves better. But, uh, Shane, I'm giving you this last question. Go for it, brother. Outside of winning the last two state championships, what is your favorite moment as a coach for the West Rebels? Well, yeah, I, I've had a bunch of those. Uh, the, the the one that the one that jumps out at me was my first year at West. That uh, and, and you know uh, the coaches that was there. We, we talk all the time that 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 may have been our best coaching job that we've ever done. Uh, that first year. Uh, we end up finishing third in the region and, uh, we go to Ray County and, uh, Ray County running the wing tee. I, they get the ball first and, uh, I don't think they have a third down. I mean, they, they go 80 yards and it, I don't think it's ever third down. Uh, not too many second downs in there and score a touchdown and, and we, we somehow found a way to score on our first possession also to tie the game up, and there was a long lightning delay. And I, I remember that game. Uh, and uh, so, you, you know, the great thing now is you've got iPads and everything else. So so we got in the locker room. We was in the locker room for about an hour, hour and a half. And, uh, I mean, and it was work in there that – my coaches were getting work done. We came up with defensive adjustments, offensive adjustments, and and then go out, go out and win the game, and ended up winning it on a safety, uh, tied up. I think final might have been sixteen to fourteen, and uh, you know just walking across the field uh, after I shook hands. I mean, there's tears in my eyes. Uh, and my wife walked up to me. She she says, "Everything okay, honey?" And I said, "It's great." Uh, <laughs> uh, but that 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 will always be a special memory to me because of the way that first group fought yeah. and, and just fought their tail ends off that game against Ray County uh, and and found a way to win. Uh, uh, that 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 that's one of my biggest best memories in coaching. Yeah. 
I think, I think all of us coaches have those moments. For me, it was uh, uh, it's been ooh, seven years ago. Uh, we beat Alcoa for the championship in the MAC the first yeah. year that existed, and we scored on a touchdown right in the cor- left corner of the end zone. And Alcoa hadn't lost games in like six years, and we won the championship right there. But I remember. That moment was probably one of the proudest moments I ever had. Even though, like, yeah, we won a championship, but the way the boys fought and yeah. thing like that, that one still sticks with me to this day. I've worked together with my kids. They all participated in some way. I had one playing on the team, one cheering. My son was, like, the mascot of the team. But it was one of those, like, it came full circle for me. Even if we had lost, like, they gave everything they had that night. And that was one of those, like, yep, this is it. Like, this is what you're in it for. Yeah, that, that, that's like, you know, I, I tell – uh, th- this story a lot that you know West High School is such a special place and it's, it's such a diverse place. But mm-hmm. you know, I, I I think when you walk in their locker room, uh, I mean, I I don't see that stuff. I mean, it, it, it's just young men being young men and young men fighting for the same goals and young men every day in their locker room. Somebody's multiple times you're gonna hear "I love you" and uh, you know, I, I tell, you know, I, I think I said it on Five Star Preps video when they followed us around in 22 during the state playoffs that, you know, I, I think our locker room is, a, it gives me a small glimpse of the way I really believe God created the world to be. And uh, it, it's it, it's a special place. And that, that, that stuff you'll never forget. I mean, you know, I, I've got two state championship rings in a box and, uh, I've had them on once, and uh, uh, it, it's it, it's uh, the kids wanting them so big, my fingers aren't strong enough to carry them around. So, and, and, and then here's the stallion who wears them daily, every yeah. day, and, and it's a conversation. Uh, but it, I, I tried to talk the kids out of it. No, let's get one smaller. We might wear it. No, they just want the one they had. But you know those things. Those things are going to be in the box. The, the the things you always remember is those bonds and, and those special memories. Of, uh, you know, there's numerous memories of kids coming in as freshmen that's in trouble every day, and you're fighting and fighting, hoping you can they can hang on and not back you into a corner where you can't give them no more chances. And, and then it goes from they're in trouble every other day now. Then they're in trouble once a week. Then they're in trouble once a month. And and sooner or later, they're no longer in trouble at all. And, and you know, those are the things that, uh, that you're always remember. Absolutely. Coach, I just want to say thank you again for being on and thank you for being our coach. Um, you know, you could have gone to Siegel, but uh, God had a plan to bring you to us. We're grateful to have you. And, and I know you said that you're on your downhill, but uh, you stay as long as you want. And if you need a little bit of motivation, give me a call. I'll write my checkbook. I'm just kidding. But anyway, I like these things too much. What can I say? But anyway. But once again, thank you guys for what you do for our football program, all the other athletic programs in our high school. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Blessings to you and the staff, you know, on the field, off the field. And, uh, uh, you know, good luck this Friday night and get it done, Coach. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Coach. Thank Thank you, you, Coach. Thank you, Coach. Wow. Guys, how awesome was that? And anybody that either got to watch that live or, um, you know, you know, it's just a it's an incredible, incredible uh, um, uh, moment to just be there with the head coach of West, who's who's busy, who took his Tuesday night. You know, they're right in the middle of preparing for a huge game against Maryville. Um, You know, guys, I hope your week is going good. You know, let's let's talk about um, the uh, the game last week against Farragut. Uh, West did come out 38 to 3. And uh, uh, basically speaking, uh, uh, you know, we all uh, traditionally that game has been close. You know, we all had it. Uh, Shane, if you still have last week's predictions and everything. Yeah, and my notebook and that is upstairs. <laughs> uh, no worries. No worries. But I, I, you know, from based on when I rewatched the show, we were all within mm. a field goal, a touchdown or 10 points. Of, I, said, uh, I said 10 plus. I said 10 plus. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, West came out like I didn't expect 35 plus. <laughs> no, no. And, and, you know, obviously, uh, Farragut's going to be, um, 
He's going through a transition right now. I think there's going to be bright days ahead for Jeff Courtney and that staff. Um, you know, we've got some uh, former uh, players uh, there at West uh, that that are on that staff. Uh, Mickey Chait is on there and so forth. So, uh, you know, and Mark Giles is on there. But uh, Mark we wish Giles. them, uh, we, we wish the, them a the great legend, shout Mark out. Giles. Yeah, shout out to them. And, to the you know, legend. we 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 wish them, uh, you know, well on, on the rest of the year because they have a brutal schedule. They've got another tough opponent this week in Cleveland. So, you know, they, they've got Beard and still, they've got Maryville. Um, they, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, so, um, but yeah, West uh, had a phenomenal game. Uh, the passing game looked great with uh, Parker. Parker did Man. 100 yards. Shout out to hey. you, brother. So Parker, he looked very comfortable out Parker, there. So, yeah. Whatever you, whatever you did to prepare for that type of offensive explosion, do it again. Like let, let's be honest, man. Like when 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 he's when he's running that tempo and he's looking down and he's getting his reads and he's got the time, he shows you what precision can look like. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I just think the sky's the limit if if you get this this type of, you know what I'm saying, protective of the ball, Parker Duvon. Um when he can make a play, make a play. Like that that completion rating. What, what was he again? Sixteen of twenty four. And and truth be told, the two interceptions he did throw were off of his own players' hands and kind of ricocheted things. So the two interceptions weren't truly his fault on that exactly, one. Exactly. That yeah. that hurt the percentage of the sixteen of twenty four. So yeah. But if he's protective of the ball, this is what you get. It's like you just need him. You know what I'm saying? You, you you need to cut down the turnovers, but those turnovers necessarily don't go to the the quarterback. That it's just that's just a placement of the blame. It would go to, even though there is context to who is the wide receiver in question. You know, in that in that regard. But well, I, I'll go ahead, too, Perk. Go ahead. My fault. That's that's where I think they'll they'll be though. If if he's if he's playing like this. Like they put up points. They did. Well, well, and you know what the other thing too is now you have to game plan for that because Farragut tried to be cute with putting eight in the box and we made them pay. And I want to give a shout out to David Drada because, you know, he was out the Clinton game, came back and, you know, had a touchdown and, you know, looked phenomenal uh, at his position. Detroit Patterson, uh, you know, finally kind of getting in the groove of things and so forth and learning the offense. He contributed with a couple of big plays and James Mills made a catch, um, you know, so uh, as coach mentioned, earlier uh, in the interview, you know, Coach Harb is working very well with that group, and he's got so many receivers to choose from. They all bring something to the table, but there is, like you said, two pair, only one ball to go around, not to mention you got a stable of running backs that can break it any chance it, they get behind that offensive it, line. It is a ton of talent, like Tavion Ray, Masaya Wren, Ferdine, McAllister, Goins, it, 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 Drada, Mills, uh, Abel Ancelot. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like Corey Person. Like yep. Corey yep, Person. So. And Dominic, a, the, the tight ends even contribute too, you know? so <laughs> It's a lot of talent when we start rattling off guys on the offense. Like we we rattled off at least seven or eight guys, maybe maybe nine. I don't know who did, who did we who did we miss? Well, well you, 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 let's hear. I mean, you got Abel. Oh, hey, listen, we hadn't even named the 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 the, the masterpiece, Burdine. Antoine Burdine, who has just oh, been phenomenal. Burdine, you, I think right. you did, yeah. But yeah. Antoine, you know, I mean, he himself, um, it, you know, you, he's a playmaker, and who's like, the, out of the guys right now. Where we're at, who's made like the the signature play of the year? Like, was Tavion Ray's touchdown the sending in the OT? Was that was that like a? I'd is say that that, that was out? a big – I would say that that's one that sticks out. I'd say the play, though, is that uh, – uh, actually, I'm going to go two different plays. Um, you've got a 95-yard okay. kickoff return by Antoine Burdine in Burnham. the Clinton yeah. game. But then our boy Jack Keith, a 96-yard pick six – 
uh, Farragut's driving down the field, and Jack Keith just jumps in front of the ball and takes it 96 yards for a touchdown. Uh, in a big win, you know, you had a, a substantial lead, but that just shows – you ain't getting in on this team. I mean, this team doesn't give yeah. up touchdowns, you know, and uh, realistically, you know, it showed, um, you know, Friday night. Shane, I wanted to ask you from a coaching perspective, yeah. um, you know, it, 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 this is West's sixth win over Farragut. You know, there was a time there where West couldn't beat Farragut, yeah. and now West has won six in a row. Just to give you this stat, West six now leads this series. Yes, West has now won six in a row. West now leads the all-time series 16-14 to 14 with three ties. So they've played a total of 33 times, and now West, you know, has taken a, a little bit of a lead in the series when before they weren't uh, in the lead. But you talk about – be the- Farragut used to, you know, always beat West. Yep, yep, like, yep. And this was the largest victory. Yep, yep. It was a period yep. of Farragut was just the, the better school back then, mm. you know what I'm saying? And yep. it's like, it's amazing how, like, times change. Wait, you, know, you, know? you, had, you had the same coach there forever, or Coach Courtney. Ever. You- and, and he's still part of the program, you know. When you have that changeover that they've had this year, even though it's similarities, it's still different. Mm-hmm. No, no coaches coach the same. Even if you come out the same coaching tree, you don't coach the same. We all approach the game differently. And for West to have won six in a row, I mean that that's hard to do around here. And Farragut's a deep team, always competitive. They they were they were off last year a little bit. I can't remember if they made the playoffs or not. And if they did, they were a lower seed. They they but, missed it by one game. They they lost that Cleveland game in Cleveland. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, 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 we were yeah. chopping. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, one second. Give me one second. Yeah. Um. Two pair. And here's the other thing too. The other stat. West is victory over Farragut. That 35 points is the largest victory by West over Farragut in all those wins, by the way. Not mm-hmm. even your state championship teams uh, had uh, big margins of victory. Last year, we only won by seven. The 2022 team won by 19. Um, or sorry, won by, yeah, won by 19. And even the 2014 state champs won by 19. So this was the largest margin of victory by West over Farragut, 35 points. And uh, uh, like like we said, the games have been close as of late. The last couple of years, they've always been competitive. And this year, I think West really wanted to come out and send a message, to be honest with you. I think they did, too. That, so, yeah. yeah, I really I really think they they wanted to show, like, hey, this is, this is what we do. This is why we are who we are. And, yeah, we're going to prove that in the Battle of Kingston Pike. I think, I think we're going to prove it. I think the other thing that they're doing is uh, showing that week one was a fluke. I mean, that, that, that was a hard fall game. That was that game. <laughs> yeah, but, well – and look at Bearden now. You know, Bearden has dropped two games, um, but they don't have the same players playing in Anderson County that were playing against West. I mean, they had a backup quarterback, backup tailback. Uh, their, stra- their their guy, Kai Ironside, was out, and they lost to Anderson County, 35-18. Did Drew start for the Elko or uh, for the Anderson County game? Who? Did Drew and Parrott start for the uh, Anderson no, County? No, no, uh, Mississippi started. Mississippi started oh, wow. the uh, the Alcoa game, but uh, Drew finished the game, and you know yeah, it, did, uh, did it so well to get them in there. Yeah. They thought they had the game won, and special did, teams, man. Did yeah. Drew start for the Anderson County game? He did. He, he okay. did the whole game. So, uh, I learned early would count Drew as a backup. That's been his team for the last three years. So you would say that it was really like like quarterback one B pretty much and so yeah. forth. Yeah, that's what it's been like. Drew had to teach the, the new quarterback the whole playbook this year, and Drew knows that offense better than anybody else, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, Drew uh, deep balls haven't really been there for him, uh, but his legs have always been there, and he's had his targets. And so, to me, I would I would never consider Drew the backup. Gotcha. That, that, that that's his team. That he's he's a captain on that out there. He knows every one of those guys, especially his receivers. I mean, they, it was a, it was a battle between him and the transfer 
that came in from Mississippi. But I mean, that's been Drew's team, and I will always consider Drew more probably the starting quarterback, but that was his team. Yeah, for sure. In my, in my personal opinion, because just because I know the kid, he's been my, he was my quarterback always since he was in fourth grade, led us to a championship, led us to uh, playing in championships. He took over as starting quarterback his freshman year over uh, Harris, his older brother. I mean, Drew, that, that, that's, that's Drew's team, to my, in my opinion. Like, they, they would follow him anyway. So, but oh, no, I mean, they've reloaded more than I thought they did. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing, too. Um, it's funny because we talked about the West Beard and Winter having a momentum, you know, be a momentum game. And so, yeah. forth. if you would have asked me leaving the West Stadium, what Bearden's record would be with them beating West, I wouldn't have said one and two, guys. No, I'm, yeah. not, mm. I'm just saying that. Um, West right now is two and one with a unbelievable challenge coming up. Bearden gets to play Maryville in a couple weeks. That's a region game. Yeah, that's a region game, and it's on Rivalry Thursday. Yep. Um, also, yeah. want to bring up, uh, you know, we'll, let's talk about it. Let's let's go on to it. It's uh, the battle. Real quick. Yeah, go let ahead, man. This. Finish it up. Yeah, uh, man, for sure. I, I didn't mean to say the Battle of Kingston Pike because we are the Sutherland Avenue boys. We we just. We just are going to take over Kingston. Hey, hey, listen, you just to have do. to just go. Wait, what do you do? You just go down Forest Glen. You take a right on Tobler, where we all puked our guts out running up and down <laughs> the thing. And there's West Stadium. It might as well be Kingston Pike if all those nice fancy homes weren't built yeah. there so many yeah. years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you might as well. <laughs> like, if, we, if you if you come down Tobler, technically we it's right we, there. We we owe keeps the fight too. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what, half, that's what, half a mile, half a mile total. Yeah, I mean you barely. gotta you gotta come you gotta come see us if if you want to win this thing you gotta come see uh, us. I, since Farragut wants to be considered its own little town, mm-hmm. I will call the Beard and West rivalry the Battle Battle of West Knox. I like that I because like the Battle of Kingston Pike is technically. <laughs> You're right. You're right because there's a Farragut tax over there. Ask those businesses in Turkey Creek. They yeah. wanted to get as close to the edge of uh, Knox County where it didn't become the town of Farragut. They pay some major taxes, guys, yeah. to be there in Turkey Creek on that side. So you're yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's why they're using program charges five hundred dollars for kids to play Yikes! Yikes! Yeah, but it's all doctors and lawyers out there, so they got that money. They do. They got that money. So, hey, remember we made that joke about the basketball game. You know, what type of pizza did they hand out to those kids for the game that never happened? Uh, was it Little Caesars or was it like you know Marcos or some expensive stuff? Gondolier, yeah. you know that type of thing. But uh, anywho, but let's talk about it, guys. It is the Battle of the Rebels in Marble City. Let's talk about the tale of the tape. In one corner, you've got. Marvel Red Rebels with, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 19 total state champions. Um, they uh, own the series lead over West 28 to 5 in 33 all time meetings, but West has won the last two in a row. And uh, in this corner, you have the West Rebels Class 5A. Uh, three-time state champions and so forth. So 19 cha- champions to three state champions. But I will say this about West. Um, West right now is the number three team in the state in Class 5A uh, b- behind uh, Page and Southwind, who are undefeated at this moment. And then Maryville uh, is number three in the state in Class 6A behind the defending champions Houston and Murfreesboro, Oakland, who's had their number as of late. But the stat that is just absolutely insane that was talked about in the chat box. It was even mentioned with Coach Brown, the fact that they have won all three ball games and shut out the other opponent, respectively. Heritage Central and Bradley Central have all been shut out by Maryville. And, uh, you know, the, the question is, can West at least get a field goal, as Coach Brown joked around? Um, but but truth be told, guys, it's a major battle. They want it bad. You know, they're tired of losing to us. We've won two in a row. 
I don't think our guys are afraid of them because we've beaten them twice. And these guys that are on the team, even though they're the guys, they helped contribute in those victories. Um, Shane, go for it. What do you think about this matchup between number three and 6A and number three and 5A, the Battle of the Rebels in Marble City, Friday the night? Marvel surprised me so far. I did, after the way last year went, I thought they were. I thought we were starting to see the decline of Marvel because you're seeing other programs step up, especially us. But both teams are reloading, and it's going. <sighs> they're going to look at the Marvel's going to look at the film from the bearding game, if, and they're going to use that one on how to try to take it to us. I don't know what film we watch on Marvel that shows our weakness. That's that's my fear. Because I mean, Mar- you, you know Marvel's Marvel. And we've all dealt with it for the last 20 plus years. But mm-hmm. you've, you've got to find something that's going to stop them. I know last year when they were losing games, it was called they want their their uh, Air Force commit, I believe he was. Yeah, Gage Ledoux. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Ledoux was that. And that dude was a beast. Like he made back for the made back for the playoffs. But man, that kid was a beast. Yeah. But you know, you take out a key player like that, you know, you were able to exploit them and it was it was a battle the whole time when I was at that game for uh the Beard and West game or Beard and uh Maribel game. And you know they're going they're going to look at they're going to watch the bearded film to see how to exploit us. Um, you've got you got we've got to find our weakness and we got to exploit it. We got to exploit it quick. And we got like Coach was saying, can't turn over the ball. You can't turn over the ball against Maribel because Maribel will exploit you real quick. Uh, the year before, it was a close game when I was out there watching that one, and it was one of those like okay. Like, we turned the ball over a lot. We had bad snaps, and it, it put us in down and distance, or it was a turnover, and it exploited. Maribel will find your weakness, and they will exploit it really, really quick. So you have to play perfect football for 48 minutes and exploit every single mistake they make, wherever it is. Where it's special teams, offense, defense, you have to take advantage of it right then and there. If it means you scoop and score, you fight for extra yards, whatever it is you have to do. You find a little crease on special teams, you take it. You don't give them an inch because you will get the best game they have no matter what it is, and that's how they play. They play every game like a state championship. It's true. And they're kind of on a revenge tour trying to, uh, they've already gotten back at uh, Bradley Central for losing twice in the same season to the same team. Yeah. Uh, you know, impressive fashion shutting out Bradley Central. I know Boo Carter and those guys aren't there anymore, but still, they weren't completely void of talent in that, uh, in Bradley in Bradley County and so forth like that. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they definitely Yeah, Bradley County uh, kind of was so loaded last year. It was Ridiculous. Like, and look at know, Cleveland this year. Cleveland's got a very good team. That, that, very that, good that, team. Very good team. Cleveland's always been the punching bag on 6A. And it's like, oh, last year was a fluke where they were beating teams. But they, they, they proved or something's happened over there where it's, it's flip flop because those two schools are right there next to each other. Yeah. With Bradley Central and, and Cleveland because it's Bradley County. But that. I'm I'm shocked to see a three and zero Cleveland right now. Right? Yeah, and, and Cleveland beat the crap out of Walker Valley, who uh, um, I was liking up to this point as possibly being a team that might be there the day after Thanksgiving that you might have to travel to if West gets through the gauntlet. Walker, Valley, Walker Valley's never impressed me. They they haven't, but they're there, you know. And I think that they play in a region that they're just so much better than the other teams. Like Ray County's taking a step back. Um, yeah. You don't really see much from uh, the Ultawas. McMinn County is has been traditionally an okay team, but yeah. you know, Walker Valley beat them last year twice. So you know that's that's the that's the breaks. Two pair. I wanted to ask you this, but. Um, what you know? You mentioned the talent of West. If West can hold on to the ball and get off to a fast start like they did against Farragut and score on Maribel, what does that do? It's like, oh well, wait a minute. You know, West is here to play, and the longer that game goes on, does Maribel get frustrated like last year and make the mistakes, and West ultimately wins like a twenty-one to fourteen battle? I mean, what's your thoughts on that, brother? 
Well, I just think we really have to control the time of possession for us to for us to be where we want to be in that game. You want to control the time of possession. Um, now, the beauty of this game is that it is on the friendly confines of Sutherland Avenue. Preach. And that place is going to be rocking. Uh, we will have field level access for highlights of the game. So we're just now getting the, the itinerary, itinerary uh, set up. So you're going to get a lot of different angles uh, for these highlights with Rebels would have caused and for the, the, the West High broadcast network uh, <laughs> where you can see <laughs> the Rebels would have caused on the West High app. If you have that West High app, you can tune into it and it, it's in the fan zone. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. big shout out to Paul Romero. So you said we, we, got, we, got field access, we got field access and parking, correct? Well, and here's the other thing. Yeah, you need to give your email because I already get, um, as part of the football staff, I get parking behind the armory and I enter through the back way. And, of course, I'm in the press box, so you guys will have the field level access because I'm actually going to be working and so forth. But uh, but that's the beauty of my position and so forth. But, yeah, definitely get your email to Romero so that way you can get that, that parking and so forth. Okay. And then, uh, you got my email, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I do. Can you yeah. Send it to, uh, Paul? yeah, I'll send it to him. Yeah, okay. um, and uh, and also, um, you know, what I'd love to do if we can pull this off, depending. I know our work schedules and everything like that. Next Friday, uh, jump in a little bit ahead. They will be honoring the 2014 OGs, the first state championship. It's the 10 year anniversary at the Central game, and why it's so special is that Kevin Lane was the defensive coordinator at West, who's now the head coach at Central. Um, Mark Giles is going to be there uh, because uh, Farragut happens to be off that week. So it really works out that key coaches, former players should be able to be there. And what I would love to do is maybe do a game day show uh, from six to, you know, seven, maybe like what we did for the beard and before the game. Actually, what I'd like to do is five. We can just do that from the press box. It'd be nice. It would be nice up there in the stands. We could do that from the stands. Absolutely. We, we could do it so, from the stands. Yeah. yeah, that would be. Yeah, we yeah, could. That, if, we, if we could get away with that. Yeah, if we could. We'd have to get some so permissions, but yeah, we'd have to get it done. Would, so. Yeah. so we would have to be there at six. Well, I, if no, we five. wanted to do a. If we want to do like maybe five thirty to six thirty, and that way there's thirty minutes cushion before you know. But games, but you know the other thing too, you could almost uh, set up by the the field house over there with the with the guys warming up in the background. That would be pretty cool. Oh, right there on the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. We, if they don't have something set up there with a barbecue, so we may we, we might need to talk to Romero about that and see if we can pull it off five thirty to six thirty uh, next Friday before the Central West game, and obviously honoring the OG. And if there's even a couple of players, uh, hint, hint, that are going to be in town that want to just sit down on the set and share some memories from that team, that would be amazing, too, during the show and so forth. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is this is getting pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of over there? Over there? I would hope Nathan's going to be there. Um, I know he's busy with the uh, the realty thing, realtor thing uh, down in Atlanta, but I hope he is there. He needs to be there the, uh, because, yeah. you know, he did come up last year when they retired his jersey. So that, that was something special to be a part of so yeah yeah but uh um but uh you know uh one thing i did want to also do real quick um i want to give a shout out to a couple of the other west sports teams that are going on right now um uh, we'll get back to the marival uh west game with predictions here in a little bit but i want to give a shout out to the west girls soccer team uh they've won their third game in a row um, they are now 5-4-1 and one on the uh, year. Uh, they ended up beating Maryville last Tuesday 2-1. to one. Um, They beat Cleveland 5-1, to one, and they beat East Hamilton 8 to nothing. Uh, as part of this three-game win streak, uh, Thursday night they have a heck of a challenge against the defending uh, state two-time state champion Bearden Bulldogs girls soccer team at Bearden Thursday night, and Bearden's 5-1-1 one one 
on the record. Shown that they can be beat, but at the same time, it's going to be a Herculean challenge, and I wish our girls the best, and hopefully maybe they can pull the upset there at Beard and get some revenge for our football team. And I also want to give a shout-out to uh, our girls' volleyball team uh, that uh, ended up winning last night. Uh, over Concord Christian. So uh, shout out to them winning uh, and uh, getting a W and uh, uh, that team just uh, continues to shout out uh, Coach Lee, baby. Yep, shout absolutely. Yep. Shout, shout, out out Ka- shout out to Coach Castro. Shout out to Coach Castro too for the girls soccer and his staff. And hopefully we yeah, can get them on Coach before Castro. their season. Hopefully we can get them on for a quick interview and, uh, you know, before their seasons respectively end. It's, it's crazy. It's already week four of high school football, guys. Man, I mean, we, are in week we are in week four. We are. We are. I'm already like, what? <laughs> We are at the two games that I said can these are really judgment games right yes. now. These next two weeks are where I, I where I judge West as Maryville and Central. This is a tough like these next two weeks are tough. And who's gonna be the guy to make plays in this game? Like <laughs> Ren, McAllister, Ray, Drada, Dubon, Mills, Davis, Perkins. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, this is this is that type of game. Yep. yep. This is that type. Burdine. This is that type of game where you you get your horses going, and Mar- Maribel's damn good. They are. Like, this is. They. They are damn good. Like <laughs> they're good teams, but they are damn good. You play teams like they this. Damn get you prepared for November, right, Shane? I mean, this oh, is yeah. not a team that you're not going. You're not going to see them because they're in a different classification. But this is why, when you play teams like this in Alcoa, it gets you prepared for whatever Page or Southwind on the other yeah. side. Of Oh, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. I mean, but, yeah. I mean, you go up against a team that I mean, you can't call Maryville team. We're just like we, we don't call West team. We call West a program. Yeah, it's a program. Maryville is the epitome of a program, just along with Alcoa, with what you want to accomplish in East Tennessee. Yeah, you want to you want your name to be mentioned like a Maryville and Alcoa. Yeah. We're getting there. We don't we don't have the legacy like they did, but we're building it. Yes. And this team, like that's what that's what you you played for. Like you you want to give this even when we played, we knew what Maribel brought to the table, and we still gave everything we had when we played. Correct. Knowing how hard of a team they were. I mean, there, there's there's a lot of Maribel's team up against some colleges. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 would, I, I would put Maribel. So, you know, Tennessee plays Kent State this weekend. I would line Maribel up and say Maribel will beat Kent State. Never know. Honestly, and some of those George Quarles teams, they may not have been the most physically imposing, but damn, were they smart. And damn, did they know what they needed to do to win. It's like you said, they, they, those they, weaknesses, they found they, ways to just demoralize teams before yeah, they, oh, um, they even got snapped. So, yeah, yeah, right. well, one of the things I always tell my players is effort, attitude, toughness, eat. Yeah. And with with Maribel, you got 100% of their effort, 100% of their attitude, and 100% of their toughness in everything they did. They played fundamentally perfect football. Yeah. Like, you you, you couldn't find a flaw in that team. Mm -hmm. They're hard to beat. Do do, do you know I like my movie references, and two pair might laugh at this one. In a way, Maribel – has their fan base, I feel, has become so spoiled. They're like the Hawks from the original Mighty Ducks where they have all those, those banners, and they're just like, you know, we don't like that set, that set state semifinalist. You know, we wish we could take that one down, or we don't honor silver balls or things like yeah. that. <laughs> Meanwhile, at West, we have banners up to honor those teams that finished yeah. third place because, damn it, that's hard. I mean, I'm sorry. That's yeah, hard. You, you would- you play for Maribel, and I've got I've got uh, a buddy, former Tennessee player. His kid plays in the Maribel program, and like, I mean, like you would disrespect, like you send your kid to Maribel, you're you're coming home with a gold football, 
at some point in those four years that your kid's there. Mm-hmm. It, I mean, that program, for the whole time that you know, I've played football and you know, coach football and been in games, like that team is just brutal. But, God, you love the way they play the game. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, sure. uh, Maryville is like the Alabama of high school football here. They are. You, you, you they are. expect it. And they have an all season. It's like, whoa, 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 what, whoa, what happened here? Something's wrong. Yeah. And, and you they know, don't to, know, be, they don't know how to, lose. To, to, to be fair, Alcoa might take a little offense to that because they do have that pride that they've won three more state championships. But remember, let's remember keep, the keep in mind the classification right. because, you know, they, what if they, you had to face Murfreesboro, Oakland the day after Thanksgiving yeah. almost every I, year? I, I still firmly believe, and there's a lot of people in our area that believe Alcoa should step up from their region. Yeah. Yeah, and they've got a tough one on Thursday against Greenville. I'm I'm excited to see what oh, happens with that. You know, Greenville's got something to prove because unfortunately, the news came out last week. They had an ineligible player. Mm-hmm. They had to forfeit that first game, so their record doesn't look as sexy as it did. Not to mention, they also had to. Um, they still have a game to make up because of that lightning delay a couple weeks yep. ago, that storm that happened. So the record's not there. But that game on Rivalry Thursday. I mean, let me just tell you this: this is the lineup for TV. This week, okay, you've got Rivalry Thursday, Packer and his group uh, w- there at uh, Alcoa for the Greenville-Alcoa game. Yep. It did not get finished last year, so they, you got that going on. And then Friday, you've got Russell Biven and his group from Channel 8 or what have you. Uh, Coach Rogers comes back to the sidelines as a sideline reporter uh, this Friday for the Maryville uh, West uh, tussle. So that's yeah, or the that, that is oh, – it. Man, I remember, oh, it was senior year, mm-hmm. and he took the uh, AD job at Grace when Grace started their program. And he was on the side, and, you know, also he's there on the sideline. You know, that, like, we were his players, and, you know, he goes over there and makes a change right there at uh, the start of um, winter workouts and everything. But, man, that, that's – that's weird to me. So just yeah. and he's called some games in the booth with Russell Biven. I guess they have a friendship. Um, but you know, Russell is going to be calling the game with another gentleman. Um, and of course, Tony's going to be on the sidelines. Um, but but yeah, so the, the game for Maryville and West will be on TV on Friday night. And uh, uh, there's going to be just like you said, two pair. Then you got the Jack FM. Um, you know, maybe even ninety nine point one might even be there. Uh, with Vince Ferrara and uh, Kevin Simon, you you never know who's going to show up. So there's going to be a lot of media and a lot of um, uh, you know uh, coverage on this game. Not to mention the coverage we give and so forth, and obviously talk about it next week. So so it's going to be it's going to be pretty big and so forth on that end. Um, we'll have predictions here in a minute. Um, I did want to talk a little. Um, college football week two thoughts, man. Um, you know, there was a lot of good action. Yeah. Uh, uh, you all can say, listen, I'm not one of those ones that like to say, I told you so, but What's did up? I say the Vols were going to bust the Wolfpack's ass? Because that's what happened, baby. They, they, I, I, I told I you say? that game I wasn't going to happen. I said two yeah, I, I said that it was going to be, the, the, I said the Vols were going to score at least 45 points. They did one better. They scored 51. Okay. And, so, and how, I mean, how about the, how about the linemen <laughs> and the protection? Yeah. Like yeah. those dudes are security guards, like Cooper Mays. Javante Spragans, John Campbell. Oh, God, that block by Campbell and Spragans all the way to the sideline. Oh, yeah. Campbell and Spragans. They, they, you, you do not want problems with that type of, um, that type of offensive line. No. Now, also, I got to give props to your uh, Hurricanes, yeah. man. Hey, hey, that fam, you defense is good though. Yeah, no, they're that, defending that, national champions. They're defending yeah, national yeah, champs. No, no, so. That fam, that fam, you defense. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man, um, the career three point leader Justin Ravenel. Uh, fam, you shout out the shout out to them. But defensively, the boys can play. Like yeah. that, that's just. Miami is a different – that's a different beast. Well, and I'm going to tell you beast. this right now. Um, there, there are some nice players in college football, but uh, 
might be biased because they are my two favorite teams. Right now, the Heisman race, as far as I'm concerned, is between Cam Ward and Nico at this point to see who can outdo the other with 300 mm. yard games and touchdowns. Cam Ward is almost to 700 yards. You know, he's had the one interception against the Gator. He has six touchdowns through the air, one on the ground. Nico mm. doing his thing. I mean, it's 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 going to be must see TV for those two quarterbacks. The difference, Cam's been in college for forever. Nico. I mean, this is really just his first year. You know, he was in the bench and redshirted last year, but Nico's got the goods, guys. I mean, oh, man, enjoy man. this young man because this is like, look how long it's taken. No disrespect to the other quarterbacks that have come through UT, but this is like a Peyton Manning type of you know, player, and you need to enjoy him for the couple of years we have him because he is going to be um, one of the highest picks probably, if not number one in a couple of years, if he progresses. That's just my opinion, how I'm so impressed with this kid's poise just right off the being so young and mature. And he didn't even let that pick six phase him. He comes back out and throws a damn t- and I, I mean, come on, you know, that's who does that? Some people hang their head. He went out there. He's got the goods, man. He really man does. does he not? Like the, the way the way the running game has been for UT, like the, the way they were really yeah, good. man. Yeah, like Samson. Then you get Deshaun Bishop giving you ten carries for forty-two yards. Yep. You know, it, it like just the little things like that. You didn't really have that many huge plays in the passing games, you had effective plays in the passing game. Mm-hmm. And, and they were just able to run the ball at will. Yeah, right. and I'm also glad that the – here's the other thing, too. You mentioned the offensive line. That wasn't a trash defense they were going up against. No, NC State always had a really good defense, you know. And and then credit to Tennessee's defense – well, they're they're really sick, deep. but oh the, the defense is sick. I mean, realistically, they didn't allow the touchdown. The touchdown was on a pick six. So they've done very, and very that, well. And that pick six was only because his elbow got hit in the throw. Exactly. And, and the trajectory was off. Yep. yep. So, so you're, looking, you're looking at a two, two of one instead of a two and two this week. But, man, that defense, God damn. And it's about time. You know, a lot of people – I know Tim Banks got a lot of criticism so, – yeah, another, he inherited. I mean, he well, didn't. Yeah, have- another, I was listening to my buddy Swain talking about this the other day. It was, you know, people were criticizing Tim Banks when he first got here. It's like, look what we had. Wait for his guys to get in there. Now he's got a hit. Mm-hmm. He wants in his defense. And that speed that they have defensively is ridiculous. Just, Boo Carter literally watched the football. Stop, watch the football, and still made a play. How many defensive guys actually stop, have to stop, watch a play, and still can make a play? You don't see that. You don't even coach that. Like that's like you don't do that. And you did it, and still made a play on the ball. Like it's it's ridiculous the speed that we have on defense right now. And can I also mention something that I don't think you guys even know? It was brought to my attention today, and I want to give him a shout because he knows how much I love him. I told him that he was going to do good things, and uh, the great Ryan Scott made a tackle in that game with two minutes and 22 seconds left. So it is recorded that a West High football player got a tackle at UT. Oh, hey, look, look, one one, one other other shout-out to our former teammate whose son plays for Tennessee. Tommy Winton III was, I believe, during the UTC game, one of the uh, special team player of the weeks. Oh, okay. For Tennessee, they recognized three players, and he was one of them. That's awesome. Yeah, okay. he's. Uh, he, I saw a photo of the wide receiver, so he's playing wide receiver for Tennessee, but he's, repping, uh, he's wearing number 30 out there. That's awesome. Yeah, so Tommy Wynn's son is out there on that roster. That's awesome. No, that mm-hmm. that's so cool to see, man. And, <laughs> and like I go. said, shout out to Ryan. And, you know, it, the fact is, is he walked on there, preferred walk on, number 50, getting already burned, and, uh, you know, tackle against NC State, and uh, it's just going to keep getting better and better. He's going to find a way on the field, and uh, everybody's going to know that name the way that we know it. In hey, the- he, he, could be the next, he could be the next Bill Brooks out there, too. He could be. He could yeah. be. Shout out to Will Brooks. <laughs> yeah. Shout yeah. Out to, hey, shout out. Will Brooks just got a scholarship off that one play, man. Shout out to Will Brooks. That's pretty cool. Yeah. No, that's pretty that cool. That was pretty cool, man. That was really cool. Yeah. That was really cool. 
You know, some other games that happened, man, you know, I was very close with that Boise State beating Oregon prediction. It should have come true. I mean, there are some teams this year that I'm not saying they can't get better. You know, everybody can get better throughout the the, the weeks of, of, of football and different opponents of how they match up. But two pairs, Shane. I mean, what is going on with Penn State and Oregon? I mean, it, 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 it really is Ohio State and and what, 17 other little dwarfs in that conference yeah. now? Because they're not the Big Ten. They're like the Big 18. It seems. Iowa so, taking yeah. Iowa losing to Iowa State. Your Cyclones, baby. They did it. They did it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. That, Michigan shit the bed. Oh, we knew that Texas. Oh, that was that was another spanking. I mean, that's why I felt like it was like those were your two marquee games, Tennessee, NC State. Then you had the noon game. Your 330 game was South Carolina pounding Kentucky. Oh like they've not been pounded in a while by a team of that you know caliber. I, I, okay. I did not think Kentucky was, Kentucky was going to do that, lose oh. like that to South Carolina. They stink. Shane Zimmer, dude's overly excited and talks so much. Man, y'all just have played his head a billion times. Like, it's South Carolina. It's not the Spurrier days with their – Holtz. It's not yeah. that. It's not even, even much it's none of that. Not much much no, no has, has, no had some okay games there. But Shane Beamer just bugs me as a coach. I, I hate that me and him have to share the same name. <laughs> I, I, I hated his father when he was at Virginia Tech. He screwed my canes over so many times. Yeah. So the Beamer uh, name – is not very friendly in my in my home. I'm yeah, sorry. My, my my best friend Brent. Is, uh, he's a UT alumni, huge UT fan, but he was born and raised a Tech fan. Mm. And he's I was like, dude, what, what's up with your team? And then it's like he's like, yeah, y'all getting beat. And he said South Carolina was getting beat. He's like, yeah, that's just I don't even like that guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping the games this week are a little bit better that are on TV. Um, you know, but but my God, that was just. I mean, because I, I kept looking for a good game, and you know, the Arkansas Oklahoma State, Arkansas let one slip there, man. I think that I think I think the writing's on the wall for Sam Pittman at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just a question of when. Um, I said finish up the season with Pittman. I think I still think uh, Florida. I still think uh, was it Napier? Napier. Before, He'll be gone for the season. Let, let me ask you this. Speaking of that game, because that's kind of like one of the sexy matchups this week, just by name alone, and it's in the swamp. Do you think Florida wins that game with Lagway now at quarterback there, or do you think A&M goes in there? Because realistically, A&M <coughs> can't even say that they lost to a good Notre Dame team after what happened with that. With oh, yeah, man, I hear you. Oh, God. Uh, I yeah, think. Northern Illinois just made a new movie. That's a yeah. new movie. That's uh, a by, new the, movie now. by the way, two pair. Guess what? You you got to introduce uh, my favorite new segment, uh, loser of the week. Uh, Notre Dame, by the way, you paid how much money to get your ass kicked by your next door neighbor? Was it one point five? Yeah, something like that. It was very sweet. So. 1. 2. 1. It was something million. up there. Yeah, it was up there. I don't, so, I don't yeah. know what it was accurately, but yeah. it, 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 a million dollars to get your ass beat at. Oh, it's like, oh, what was it? Five years ago with us, what was it? Georgia Southern? State. Georgia State. Georgia, Georgia State. I, I get those two confused because I <laughs> they're very similar. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we, we paid one point two million to get our to get whooped by them, and the, uh, the following week lost to BYU. Hey, that was that was a that was that was rough times at UT right there. That was that was the start of the era, wasn't it? Hey, can I just say this? That was who's there? Who's there? Was that the Pruitt 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 era? Was Pruitt era. Pruitt was there. I'm oh, telling you, so, that yeah. was the Pruitt era. That's oh horrible. my god, poop stain Pruitt. I mean, unbelievable. And then, yeah, and then they lost to BYU the the next week. I think uh, you know, long long five on fourth and super long. Oh, How many times did Bush Jones beat Florida once? Once yeah. because of uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Dobbs because of Dobbs. That was Dobbs and uh, uh, Juwan Jennings. No, yeah. no, uh, Josh Smith. Josh, Josh, Smith. Josh Smith runs that like that Josh Smith. post catches the ball behind him like this, like when he turns his body this way, whips himself back around, 
and takes off for a touchdown, and that changes the momentum of the game. Yeah. Oh, the number one game. Jennings game you're thinking of, two pairs, when they beat Kirby and Georgia. Georgia. The only time that but, they but beat But Juwan Georgia Jennings went off in the, off the, in the Florida years. game, too, though. Didn't he, he did. go off in the Florida game? He did because they started to pull away after that halftime deficit. You know, like, they were down. People forget that Florida. Yeah, we were down. I was like, yeah, we were down 21-0. Yeah, a lot of people forget Florida. Everybody was thinking, up oh, here we go again. And then Tennessee turned it on and didn't look back, you know. But, but honestly, though, it's so, guys, we need to be so thankful for Josh Heupel. We really do. Um, mm. You know, the staff, the recruits that are coming in, more players are committing. Um, I, I'm telling you, man, it, because it, this fan base, and I've talked to my Miami friend, fans too, enjoy it while you can because, dude, when you're already out the first or second week of the season, it's no fun, man. You wait all year for this, and it's like your team's already done, you know? And now, granted, you now have – what, 11 spots? Because one of the spots is going to go of the 12 to the FC or to the highest group of five mm-hmm. teams. But my point is, is that, you know, there's a very little margin of error. I mean, Notre Dame's strength of schedule is absolutely horrendous. And to lose to Northern Illinois, even if they run the table, I wouldn't put their asses in at 11 and 1. I wouldn't. No, you're not a part of a mm-hmm. conference. You're not. You're not even playing the toughest of the tough. Like, if they were playing the top three SEC, top three ACC, and top three Big Ten, you know, then we'll talk, you know. But you're not even doing that. And right. and you had every right to 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 get your ass kicked in South Bend. That 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 one girl, she was what, – what was she doing? She was they, – they had her on NBC. Like, like, just like she was devastated. And I'm like, yeah. You got whipped. There was no touchdown Jesus or none of that. You just lost. And I hope Purdue beats their ass uh, on Saturday. So, you know. So, yeah. None of that. I, 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 I've never been Notre Dame fan. I'm, I hate the way that they're always ranked. Like, you're not in a conference. You don't you, – you pick your schedule who you want. Technically, you play ACC teams and then – like, you, you're a part of every conference and every other sport of the ACC, but you didn't want to join, uh, you know, with, with yeah. football. And you might have to. I mean, so. And I'll tell you this, two pair, no disrespect. Do you think, and I'm going to throw this out there, with Florida State, do you think they've brought a lot of attention to themselves with these lawsuits? And they ain't getting calls from the ACC refs, man. I don't, I, you, you have to be careful when you piss off the league you're trying to leave and you've not officially left yet, you know. Clemson, too. I mean, Clemson's uh, kind of. Well, yeah, you know, and the got that weird clause, like, you just can't leave, like, oh, no. oh, it, I don't know it, who their lawyers are, but they were pretty good of how they designed that contract. I don't yeah. know. So, shoot. Like, you're going to get yeah, whoever just... wants them to buy, to help with the buyout. Yeah. But, I mean. This is really <laughs> sad in Tallahassee right now. It is, like, it is a hangover of epic proportions down there. Like, they just can't get it right right now. Like, they... They got a and lot Memphis of is a, and Memphis is a good team. Memphis is trying to be that group of five team that gets that 12 spot. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there's that whole matchup. You know, Norvell used to coach at Memphis before he went to Florida State. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, Me- Memphis is not a trash program, man. They are a oh, very no. good team. Uh, from yeah, there, was couple, there was a couple of years ago when you could say the best team in Tennessee was Memphis. Was Memphis, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. in the back end of the Butch era, the front end of the Pruitt era. Oh, my yeah, Memphis was the best team in, in the state of Tennessee at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what the worst thing is? And no disrespect to them, but, like, dude, Tennessee was losing to Vanderbilt. And that just – that shouldn't happen, you know what I mean? Like, they were losing to Vanderbilt, it felt yeah. like. I mean, we, we, lost, we, we lost to them under the Pruitt era and under the Bush Jones era. Yes, and, I mean, and Dooley, the, and Dooley, yes. So like, I don't remember growing up there. You did lose to me. You didn't lose to like, Kentucky. You start losing to both teams. Like, come on. I, I really hate to say it. Those two games were automatically you. You knew you'd get two wins right there, and yeah. then you basically would get the three wins of the out of conference teams. And it really, our seasons came down to Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. You know, yeah. like, realistically, of how sexy the record looked back then. So. Yeah. yeah. So. Like you had guaranteed five wins. Like, okay, these are our five wins. Now we got to actually compete in these. But, what, hey, what's up with Colorado right now? 
<laughs> oh, uh, Larry Frank's Ooh. on preparing for the hurricane. He just got on. Larry, you need to definitely go back. We had our head football coach on, gave a lot of good stuff as we prepare for a big matchup Friday night against uh, the number three team in 6A. We're the number three team in 5A, just to catch you up. But right now, brother, um, praying for you guys and that hurricane down there in Louisiana. But we're talking about college football. And Shane just brought up what's going on with Colorado and uh, Man, Dion. Man, what is going on? De- that yeah. is. It's getting rough right now. Like, yeah. we want to see if you can win football games. Like, yeah. whoever you got on the sidelines, the spectacle, like, we want to see if you can win football games. Mm-hmm. Like, now the offensive line is getting talked about. And then, you, you know, as a quarterback, as a leader, like, you got to be able to not throw them dudes under the bus. Like, mm-hmm. you win as a team, lose as a team, man. Like, yeah, it, it's tough, but you guys are replacing. You, you, you put 43 guys on your I team. thought that they fixed that. I, the two pair, I thought that they fixed that in the offseason with the transfer portal. You mean to tell me you couldn't get five good hog mollies that may not have been very happy at the schools mm-hmm. they were at? Pay him that NIL money to protect potentially the number one draft pick in Shadur Sanders. Potentially, <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, I really don't. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, you know, sap it. Uh, preach, Larry Frank. Colorado's finished. Shador throwing players under the bus. Uh, Shiloh finished. Sap a waste of a coach. Prime hype is done. He'll be gone at season's end. And then my question is this. We talked about this last week. Does he go to the Gators or is that Lane Kiffin's job over there? I mean, at this point. I mean, if if you if US <laughs> if USC didn't lose to LSU, I would have said he was going to LSU. Mm-hmm. For sure. No, For no, sure. USC. I would have said he was going to USC. Going, oh, so. so he was gonna replace uh, uh um yeah. If you if USC doesn't lose the LSU, yeah, for sure. Like, well, USC, I'll tell you this, LSU. I mean, you know they they were struggling with Nickel State last week. They can't stop the run, man. <laughs> not the same. Not not. Here, here's the thing: the defense didn't get better. Oh, they hired a terrible coach, and he's horrible. He's awful. So I'm telling you, I mean. And I'll tell you, you this, get, Nebraska you, 2-0. You Nebraska get rid of Orgeron. You get rid of Orgeron for this. Horrible. Got rid of the Cajun guy. Got rid of the guy that, you know, didn't give him a chance to fix the problem. You bring in a, a wannabe in Brian Kelly, and that's what he is, is a wannabe. Come on. I'm telling you. Like, yeah. you, didn't, you, didn't give, you didn't give the guy that got you to the mountaintop a chance. He put together probably – that, that's the that's one of the best that's one of the top ten best teams I've ever seen in college football. Without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt, and the coaches, you know, that some of those coaches from that staff have jobs themselves or are in the NFL, like the offensive coordinator guy that designed Joe that Brady. Movie. Joe Brady, he's with the Bills. He's with the Bills. Brian Kelly, no, uh, Bush Jones called Brian Kelly over. Like he was always his replacement. That was where Bush Jones got it from. Yeah. Let Larry, Larry bring in the heat. Orgeron's happy with those college-aged girls in Miami. Yeah, because his son's an analyst for the Canes, and he helps out at practice sometimes unofficially because he's collecting all that money that they had or to pay. Maybe, so, yeah. He started out at Miami. Yeah, he did. He started out on um, Jimmy Johnson's staff down yep. there. So, yep, he sure did. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm just saying that, like, some of these coaches – I mean, look at UT, man. I, I mean, I thought, you know – Look, I was disappointed with Falmer, but realistically, looking back, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Could we have given the man a chance to maybe fix it for a couple of years? The reason Fulmer got let go was because he was on the brink of breaking Nealon's all-time win record. And the powers that be, a.k.a. Haslam, didn't want to see his coach be number two. Wow. That, 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 that is a proven fact. Wow. And money stops if you don't do what he says. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of guys, I guess, just didn't pan out to, to give that excuse. The OC hire wasn't a good one after uh, 
Cutcliffe left for uh, Rick Lawson. Lawson was that wasn't a good that was, no but that wasn't a good hey. the, instead of giving Homer the ability to fix it and say oh the game's passed him by Homer knew football Homer knew what he needed to do he knew who to bring in Hyphen did not want to see Homer in front of General Neal. And that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, Larry. We Notre Dame was our loser of the week, paying one point something million dollars to get your neighbor to kick your ass on national TV for your home opener. I mean, it's just mm. incredible. And Michigan. I mean, guys, Michigan didn't even look competitive. I mean, my question is this: Yes, they lost Harbaugh. Yes, they lost all those fun guys. But had they mm. been recruiting at a high level? Did everybody just jump ship? And go transfer to other teams. I mean, I'm, 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 curious, Ohio I'm, State curious, last year. I'm curious if, uh, you know, basically their version of Spygate was a reason they made that change. And That's possible. So, but is Texas that good or is Michigan that bad? I think it's a mixture of both. I think it's a mixture. Of I both. think it's a mixture I mean, of both. T- t- Texas looks solid, and Sarkeesian. You got to think he learned from from Saban. He knows what it's going to take. He may have failed at USC, but he's really gone on a redemption tour, kind of like Kiffin with Ole Miss. And and let me tell you this: I know Ole Miss hasn't played anybody yet, but damn man, they are just smoking the teams that they're supposed to be smoking. I mean, that's a team that I can't wait. I can't wait to see some of these sexy matchups. I, I don't want to wish the season away, but you're going to start to learn about some teams over the next few. Mm-hmm. I, I hate that we don't have uh, in the SEC. We don't have our uh, East and West now. Yeah, I think they could have still kept it between you and I. I think they still yeah. could have kept it. I mean, I mean, I think at the end of the season it's going to be Georgia and Texas for the championship. But you know, what if Tennessee pulls the upset? I don't think I don't think Tennessee loses to anyone until they get to Georgia. I honestly, Alabama looked very beatable the other night. I mean, yeah, that, that, four, that four was very, very misleading because it was what six to fourteen in the fourth quarter until they pulled away. Yeah, it was. It was actually twenty-one to sixteen. Um, of and uh, and then Alabama just. I don't know what happened because I was so engrossed in our game, um, yeah. and I should have kind of gone back to it, but. I was like, how the hell did they score 21 points in seven minutes? Like, because that's, it was like 21 to 16 with seven minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, what, what, Saban will come down on the sideline and putting the, the field after him? It's like, hey, I don't want you all, I recruit you all. What, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So, I'm taking all your chargers and challengers. <laughs> Well, and then and then here's the other thing too. So, you know, the the games last week there were some upsets. Should have been some more. I really believe Bowling Green should have beaten uh, uh, Penn State. I really believe that uh, uh, Boise State should have beaten Oregon. They're going to get theirs. But I will say this much: this week, though, I still can't grasp why game day went to South Carolina for LSU versus South Carolina. It's not like LSU is undefeated. If LSU had been undefeated, I could see it. But unless they're just trying to go on a tour of, oh, let's go to places we've never been before, and this just happens to be a matchup. I mean, there has to be a better game that game day could have gone to this week. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. So. Next, week, next week, if they're smart, they'll be at Tennessee versus uh, Oklahoma. And no North. doubt. No doubt. No doubt that, especially, you know, Tennessee. You get, you get, you get the return of high school to Oklahoma. Yeah. You got, you no, know, I, I think Tennessee will be within the top five next week. Oh, absolutely. And, and let me ask you this. Tennessee plays a max school. Who is it this week? Penn State. Um, okay. So they'll beat the hell out of them. Miami's be, going to beat the hell out of Ball State. So, but my Tennessee question is. For, I, I say Tennessee's worth seven. Without a doubt. Um, I, I honestly, if that's not the game with all the storylines, I don't know what ESPN's smoking at this point. I really don't. Mm. So, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Uh, Trick Williams going to be the guest picker. He played at South Carolina. Okay. Mm. All right. What, 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 what
Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, moving on from college football, uh, week two thoughts. How about some NFL week one thoughts, man? I mean, what was up with some of these teams disclosing and hiding injuries and screwing fantasy football owners like myself, waiting <laughs> to the last minute to let us know if McCaffrey was playing or not? You know, I mean, I still won, but man, uh, that margin. Hey, shout, out, shout out to the uh, backup running back last night from Dallas. He did great. He did great. Yeah, the 40, the 49ers are my new team. So that, that's who I'm rolling with this year. Yep. Yep. But uh yeah, I was like, well, what, I was like, where's CMC at? What, what's going on? <laughs> well, and I'll tell you this, um, the Carolina Panthers, they stink. They are horrible. And uh, uh the Saints, I think oh, everybody, oh. if you had a Saints player, you probably won your fantasy game because everybody had touchdowns and yards galore, depending on what type of league you play in, honestly. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on, on the NFL, bud, of uh, what you watched or anything? Well, the thing that got me on the NFL is when you see a guy like Baker Mayfield who Goes to a Tampa Bay, throws four touchdowns. It's like this you is see one what the Sean you see what the Sean Watson was with the Browns, and you like, wow, who could be a luckier team <laughs> to have that type of effect that happened to them? Like, and then what really touched me this week is. It is very hard to be a black man and getting behind that oh, wheel. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? For like Tyreek Hill, like what he went through um, this weekend, like I don't want anyone to ever go through that. Like, because he's a well known. So had he not been who he was, he was you know, that. the outcry. Of like the, the like the, the the police, do they understand that you arrested Calais Campbell too? Like these dudes are going to the game. If you don't notice that those guys are Miami Dolphins, I don't know what you know. What I'm saying what, what, what the rock you're hiding under. What they get pulled over for? What they get stopped for? It was supposed to be some traffic thing, right, or something, or, or I don't know what the hell it yeah, was. Yeah, it was like, what, what he, I mean. like you, we give him a speed, like give him a speed ticket, and be on his way, but to to, to have the man down by fours, put him in, like he just had a he had just had surgery on his knee. Yeah, on his knee. Yeah. I'll tell you this. I think every, I mean, I'm not trying to make light of the situation. If they had hurt him in that way, you know, the lawsuit that could have been done, not to mention you would have had 70,000 Dolphins fans kick those cops' ass. I mean, I, I mean that like, you know, uh, but, but, but truth be told, it's like, how does that happen? What do you want to know something? I, I missed the whole, um, what was it? The CBS, you know, like how they start the, 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 they preview the games and they talk, the talking heads talk and everything like that. And I get the kickoff and, I was like, what happened? Like, what did I miss? Because I was mowing my lawn outside and just trying to get it done so I could watch the one o'clock games. And I was just like, what in the world? Is this a joke? And and then when you see the body cam footage, re- you know, revealed yesterday or whenever it came out, I mean, th- that can't happen. Yeah, I saw, I saw it on TikTok. And I, I watched um, Tariq's interview afterwards. And it's like we need we need to come here, we need to find a resolution. Like if I if you file stuff, it's like if I wasn't Tyree Hill, it's be a completely different story. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it's just disgusting. Just disgusting. So yeah. yeah. Um you know, uh I, I do want to laugh about this statement that Larry Frank put. The Panthers couldn't beat their meats if they had a girly magazine. Yeah, I, I read that and I, I, I died laughing. I had to hold my laugh in. Yeah, for sure. I mean Larry bringing the heat, baby, on a Tuesday with a hurricane on the on the banks of Louisiana about to hit, man. I'm telling you. So shoot. Yeah. Um yeah, you know, I can I can I also say this? I know it started on Thursday, but can anybody beat the Chiefs at this point? I mean, the Ravens, I mean, I know that the toe was out and, and everything, but, man, Baltimore just fucked around that game, and I was so just like, you are better than them, and you find new ways to lose to them every time you play them. I think the Chiefs are in the Ravens' head at this point. I still, I still think the league has, has it in for the Chiefs. Like, they get everything. It's... 
that's the money maker they bring in fans due to who's dating who and all that crap. And oh, we gotta make sure this team does what we want to do. So we bring in money. And I'm not trying to say they're not talented, and I'm not trying to be a hater because they're not my team. But damn, it's like they were nothing for so many years. Like, I mean, they were they they nice they players. They make me think of the Patriots. It's so bitch where we all hate yeah. the Chiefs. Yeah. It's getting closer and closer each week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even Andy Reid, he was okay in Philadelphia, you know, but the knock on him was he could never win the big one. Remember, yeah. like, he could never win the big one. Yeah, and but he's he was a quarterback guru. But. Yeah, yeah, he was also known as that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just think about things like that, and at, I know that there's different dynasties and, and, and things of that nature, and who knows, people could be sick of West with the, with the high school, you know. Yeah. But it, I, I, I couldn't even watch a Chiefs game anymore because I was any time about Taylor Swift. Dude, they, they, they followed her in, you know, and what she was wearing and everything. And I'm like, God, can we just worry about football and everything like that? I mean, goodness like, gracious. Like, literally last year, like, anytime I turn on the game, there were always, like, the primetime games, the main games of the day. That's all I see. Like, I, I turn it off. Like, it got to where I didn't even want to watch the games. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, don't, I don't get a fine – I mean, honestly, I hate to say it. I think that they have a camera set up in the stadium that just focuses on her of yeah. all things, you know? And it's like when something goes wrong, they show her and Mahomes' wife or, you know, like like just that press. No, it's like uh, all the old CBS commentator. Was it, oh, who was it? Was it, was it Gary Danielson? Yeah. Like, well, don't have a hot girlfriend. Because that's what we're going to turn this broadcast to be about. Oh, oh, you mean Brett Musburger? Oh, Musburger, yeah, Musburger yeah. was hitting on uh, the Alabama quarterback's wife. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. So, all right. Well, let me ask you this. I, I want to end the show with some picks. How about some high school picks? Shane, do you got the games oh, for this week? And, cool. and let's see if we can. Uh, um, I, two pair, I think you won last week with more predictions right, to be absolutely honest with you. So, um, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, uh, and of course, I want to save our West, uh, I want to save our West pick uh, last and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to do some uh, high school football picks before we wrap this up. It's been a great show. And again, thank you to Coach Brown for being on. And if you missed it, go back and watch the show from the beginning. Um, he was on for our first uh, 35 to 45 minutes and uh, just just such a wonderful time with him and learning so much about him and the program and culture he's built with West and so forth and wish him luck this Friday night against those Maryville Red Rebels uh, uh, in Marble City. So, but... Um, yeah. Uh, I get these pulled up. It took me a little bit to find them last week, so let's see what we find. Okay. Mm-mm. All right, here we go. All right. We'll go. We'll go with the east part. If I can get this to close out. There we go. All right. We got Greenville and Alcoa Thursday. I'm going Alcoa. Okay. Two pair, what you think, Alcoa or Greenville? Mm. I'm, I'm always picking Alcoa until they prove me otherwise. Yeah. Mm. I got to go. I'm going to go Greenville. Nice pick. <laughs> nice pick. Um, I, I think that uh, – um, Alcoa wants to kind of prove that uh, uh, that Bearden game wasn't a fluke, that uh, they're a good team, and uh, they've had a week off to get ready for Greenville. Um, I think it's going to be a great game, but I just think Alcoa and Pistol Creek, uh, I think Alcoa gets it done by a field goal, closer than what they did. I, I, I will be very shocked if Alcoa blows out Greenville. I think it's going to be close. But the I'll lights are going to cut off on the final the play. The lights are going <laughs> to cut off on that final play if Greenville gets a shot. So, yeah. All right. Next up, we got uh, Fulton and Anderson County. Oh, man, I think Anderson County rolls, Fulton. I think Anderson County's got a great thing going. Um, no. And uh, um, I think that, uh, realistically, Anderson County. Um, I'm going to Anderson County. I'm going to Anderson County as well. Yeah, yeah, I think they they got it. So, Tuper, what do you think, Anderson County or Fulton, bud? Oh, Fulton is rebuilding, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, back in the day, this game would be Anderson <laughs> County. But... Mm. 
Now I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my guns. I'm gonna say Anderson County might pull pull out the win. Okay, all right, we'll take it. All right, what's the next one? Got Walker Valley and Bradley Central. I'm going. Hmm, that's tough. Ooh, Bradley Central. Walker Valley's never impressed me, even though they made the playoffs. I'm still going Bradley Central. Just to be different, I'm going to go with Walker Valley just because I could potentially see them as the team after the day after Thanksgiving. I haven't seen McMinn. No, I, I agree with that, too. I'll, 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 I'll take Walker Valley, too. All right, so we're both going Walker Valley. Two pair, what do you think, Walker Valley or uh, Bradley Central? Mm, I am not here to see neither teams play, but – Bradley Central typically puts out some gas. I'm going to go Bradley Central. All right. We got Bradley Central down for two pairs. So. All right. Um, we'll skip over the next two because we don't ever cover any of them. Let's go Farragut and Cleveland at Cleveland. Oof. Uh I've got to go with Cleveland. I don't think this gets any easier for Farragut. Uh, I got Cleveland. uh, And uh, if Cleveland can clean up the penalties, uh, it might might even be a very impressive win for them, especially in region play. Mm. I I don't think Farragut is prepared for this year. I think the coaching change has affected them. I think last week it's going to sit in their head. I don't think they they bounced back from it. So I'm going going Cleveland over Farragut as well. Okay. Two pair, what you got, Cleveland or Farragut? Yeah, give me Cleveland. Farragut's got a long way to go. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Campbell County and Clinton. You know, um, I think Clinton is going to win pretty handily in this game. So, I got Clinton yeah. beating Campbell County. So, yeah. You got Clinton beating Campbell County? Yep. Mm, uh, I might have to take you up on it if you think so. It's just – the last time I saw Clinton was not a good showing. Yeah, yeah. They did win last week. They did beat the heck out of Scott County last week, so they did get Indeed. on the winning track. So. All right, next pick, AE and GP. Austin East and Gallagher. Man, Austin East lost to South Doyle last week. I couldn't believe that. Uh, I know that they're not too happy with Stanton, but they got to give the guy some time to to rebuild what, what the program he inherited is. I like GP, even though GP let me down against Carter. So G- GP's always been a good team. I think Austin East, they've, they've, got, they've got to give him time. Yeah. Um, you, you can't expect instant gratification, even though he is an AE guy. <laughs> Right, so you gotta get the guys balling. You gotta get you guys in the program, staying in the program. I'm still going GP. Yeah. yeah. BT, what you got? Mm. Ooh. I know your heart's with AE. I know that much. My so. heart is with AE, but man, yeah. man, Gallenberg Pittman going, going, going to show them boys a little different side of the football. Ugh. Hate to see mm. it. Hate to see it. Next up, Seymour and Gibbs. You know, let me tell you something. Gibbs, uh, they 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 look good. I mean, they yeah, I, I, watched, I watched them last week. I watched them on Friday against Carnes. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I like yeah. Gibbs to roll against Seymour. So All right, their quarterback man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did not impress me as much last week? He's a little bit more mobile than I expected, but he didn't overly impress me. Like. Carnes' issue last week was they kept the defense on the field too long. Uh-huh. They couldn't get out. The, they just couldn't get them off the field. And they their defense, Carnes' defense, kept them in the game for as long as they could until they got gassed. But no, I'm still gonna go with Gibbs on this one. But the quarterback isn't what I expected. Like what we saw in the spring game, I'm not mm-hmm. seeing it yet. But I want to watch him. I want to watch him play those two times. But it. I think he'll show out this week against that bad Seymour defense. I yeah. really do. So. Uh, let's see. Next up, keeping it local, we got Halls and Harden Valley. I'm taking Halls easily. I think Halls wins big. So they uh, Hall, Halls needed overtime to beat Fulton last week, um, but I think Halls uh, wins this game very. Yeah, uh, Harden Valley's ever put out a good product on the field, in my opinion, over all the years. There's always some issues with inside the with inside their staff and the players and how they react. Uh, that's just going out of some personal things over there, but I'm going to take Hall. 
Uh, next one up is Powell and Heritage. Uh, Powell looked very impressive against Oak Ridge last week. I'm not really surprised by that outcome. Um, I think Powell wins pretty handily against Heritage. But Heritage did beat William Blunt last week, which I was very surprised about. I picked William Blunt, but uh, Heritage is yeah, well, so yeah, so but uh, Heritage, uh, I think, is just going to be a little bit overmatched in this region game against Powell. So. Okay. Uh, next up, we'll go South Doyle and Carter. Oh, Carter! Carter should win this pretty handily. So yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. Battle of the private schools. Let's go Ensworth and Catholic. You know, um, Catholic start has started out three and zero. You know, can't bet against them. Jaden Neal's back in the starting lineup. Um, I think it's just going to be too much of a tall task. I like Ensworth uh, to be Catholic, probably by 10 points. So, yeah. I'm going to knock off all three of the local private schools real quick. So, actually, four. One, two, three. Yeah, four. CAK and Grace play this weekend. Oh, really? Um, I like Grace. I like Grace. So, yeah. Yeah, CAK hasn't impressed me much in a long time. Not since the Josh Smith, Josh Smith days. So, yeah, I'll take Grace. Yeah. What you got, BT? Oh, man. I think I'm going to – is Grayson and – no, this Grayson. Christian Academy in Knoxville. Christian Academy. In, uh, yeah, yeah, give me Grace. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got the athlete. Yeah. I, I see our, our, our boy Michael Courtney launch a bunch of law fireworks over there at Knoxville Grace against CAK. No, yeah. nice. There we go. So, uh, so that, next up, one up to cover the uh, private schools in the area. We got Notre Dame and Webb. Uh, give me Webb. Give me Webb in that one. Yeah. So, give me Webb in that one, too, I think. Then I'll lose it. I got Webb as well. Making sure we'll leave our game for the last one. We'll make sure to cover all the east area of Tennessee. It's a big week this week. Let's see. Yeah, it is a big week. Hmm. Central, no, that, oh, wow. Central is playing. Oh, oh no, that's no, that's not. It's not Central Kentucky at Scott County. Never mind. Mm. Uh, pull back up. Isn't Oak Ridge and Carnes playing this week? Yep. Oak uh, Carnes is at Oak Ridge. I like Carnes mm. at Oak Ridge. I think Oak, I don't know what's going on at Oak Ridge. They've got this talent. I think that there's a different of philosophy of uh, because Derek Rang's a hell of a coach, and uh, I just can't believe they're not doing better. Um, but uh, give me Carnes in that one. And realistically, if Carnes wins that one, Carnes is in the driver's seat to get that uh, number one seed uh, yeah. out of that. Out of that. Yeah, Carnes' Car- Car- defense has really impressed me. I'm so worried. About, you know, I've been. I'm. I got. I got field level access when I'm out there because of being on the coaching staff. The, the offense bothers me with how long it takes to get play calls in mm. and stuff that they're calling. It's not. Making sense, especially when you got a stud. They got a stud receiver number fourteen. I mean, that kid. Like I tell my son who played receiver, I'm like, I'm like, 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 watch this kid. Like, dude is, dude is sick with it. I mean, he was burning kids left and right, but the quarterback is not making the right reads and play calls come in way too late, and you're getting penalties. But that defense is stout as hell. Give me Carnes by seven. I like that. No, I like that pick. So, uh, Cooper, who you got? Uh, Carnes or Oak Ridge in that one, bud? So, man, give me Carnes. Uh, I like it. I like man, it. So. Give me Carnes. I don't know. Like, oh, is this at Oak Ridge too? It's it's at Oak Ridge, but man, they haven't looked good. They just, I don't know, man. Powell it, ran it, over them. It's, Powell they, ran it's over. damn Tom. It's damn Tom. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go uh, Knox Central at Udawa, which Udawa is where I used to live for a few months back in the day versus Knox Central. So I'm going to go Central. Give, give me give me Kevin Lane in Central. Give me Central, yeah. Uh, we got William Blunt and Mo East. Give me the Hurricanes mm. and Mo East. So, Mo yeah. East. 
Mo East. Oh, baby. And the final one. Rebels versus Rebels. Who is the Rebel of East Tennessee? All right. Two pair, who you got, Maryville or West, bud? Uh, man, I, I think it pretty much knows where I'm riding with this one. It's 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 definitely the Rebels of Sutherland Avenue. I think they find a way to win. I think they control the I think they control the time of possession more than anything to win. I got West by three. Nice pick. Shane, what do you got? I, I, I hate to be the negative guy here. I, I, I it's hard for me. But as a football coach, Maryville is on a revenge tour. Mm-hmm. And you know that they have held everybody scoreless. West scores. And we score a good amount. But I think Maryville on their revenge tour to show that last year was a fluke. I'm taking Maryville by six. Maryville by six. I hate saying it, but it's just no, no. You're you're good. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be non-biased. No, you're good. Um, I'm going to just set it up like this. I think that uh, um, we're going to see a West team come out at home in front of the fans. Going to be an electric atmosphere. I think they come out strong, and it's Friday the 13th. So why not? Let's uh, let's roll with West to have some, uh, you know, wookie wookie stuff go our way for a change. I, I, I hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope oh yeah, I'm absolutely. Wrong. But win or lose, win or lose, this team just needs to show me improvement because we've got a lot to play for. The record is yeah. one thing and so forth, but I just don't want to be blown out. That's the thing. But I think that the beard and loss and the taste that was in those boys' mouth, they're going to come out there. They've probably heard it all week that oh, you know, Maryville hasn't allowed a score and everything. Thing. Um, I think West comes out there Friday the 13th and wins by a last second field goal by Pete Rogers and uh, West gets it done. So I'm going to go with yeah, the I, I, hope, I hope I'm wrong. I'm just going off what I've seen football wise and Maryville's it's like, like I said, they're on that revenge tour because last year you, that, that was a member we've never seen before. It's true. That is true. So yeah. And they got some great players They and great coaches. So yeah. Well guys show i know it's getting late there but uh two pair why don't you close us out man um it's been such a fun show gotta throw up that w like we always do it's gonna be a fun friday night tune in on tv or jack fm or be there and get loud and be proud should be a fun friday night but close us out two pair hey man it's rebels with a cause man love peace and chicken grease we'll do it again same time same channel absolutely go rebels go rebels